On April 16, 1862, President Abraham Lincoln signed into law an act that freed all the slaves in Washington, D.C. Not only did they free the slaves, they offered them money. Was this the first payment of slave reparations back in 1862? We will look at this law and find out. April 16th is still celebrated as Emancipation Day in Washington, D.C. This was the day that all slavery ended in our nation's capital. Before we talk about this law, let's give a little background information. In 1861, most of the southern states seceded from the Union, forming the Confederate States of America. This meant that Congress was only made up of representatives from the North and a few border states that still had slavery. Therefore, we get a real look at what the northern states felt about slavery and black people in the United States. Keep in mind that this law only applies to the District of Columbia or Washington, D.C. This law is titled, An Act for the Release of Certain Persons Held to Service or Labor in the District of Columbia. I will not read each section of this law, but I will summarize each section. If you like, you can pause the video and read each section for yourself. Section 1 basically says that everyone that is enslaved by reason of African descent in the District of Columbia is freed, except for people convicted of a crime. In other words, they are freeing all the slaves in Washington, D.C. Section 2 of this law says that any slaveholder who is loyal to the United States shall submit a list within 90 days of the slaves they own to the commissioners. This list will have the names, ages, and personal descriptions of the enslaved, the manner in which they acquired them, and any facts touching on the value of the enslaved people. Section 3 says that the President of the United States, with the advice and consent of the Senate, shall appoint three commissioners who reside in the District of Columbia. Any two of the commissioners have the power to act, shall receive the petitions, and shall investigate and determine the validity and value of the claims they are presented. The appraised value of the slaves shall not exceed $300 for each person shown on the list. The commissioners will pay the slave owner up to $300 for each slave freed. This section of the law is going to pay for each slave freed to the white slave owner? This is slave reparations? I don't think this would be very popular these days. Section 4 basically tells the commissioners when they must produce a report to Congress and how they will pay the slave owners for the freed slaves. Section 5 of this law describes when the commissioners will hold their sessions, that they will have the power to investigate and receive testimony on claims that they find suspicious, and they can hire a clerk to record their sessions. Section 6 is basically how much the commissioners are going to be paid and that they will be compensated for their expenses. Section 7 simply states they will not spend more than $1 million on this law. Section 8 of this law makes it a crime to kidnap anybody within the District of Columbia and sell them into slavery somewhere else. If you're convicted of this crime, you can serve between 5 and 20 years in prison. This part of the law was necessary because slaves were a lot more valuable if you could take them out of the district and sell them. Section 9 gives a deadline on how long the slave owners have to file their list of slaves with the commissioners and that each claim submitted, they must pay a fee of 50 cents. Section 10 of this law basically states, that the free slaves must pay the clerk 25 cents to receive papers that prove they are now 
free. Section 11 of this law states how much money the free slaves are entitled to or what kind of reparations they get for their slavery, and here's what it says. And it be further enacted that the sum of $100,000 out of any money in the treasury not otherwise appropriated is hereby appropriated to expend under the direction of the President of the United States to aid in the colonization as settlement of such free persons of African descent now residing in said district, including those to be liberated by this act as may desire to immigrate to the Republic of Haiti or Liberia or such other country beyond the limits of the United States as the President may determine, provided the expenditure for this purpose shall not exceed $100 for each immigrant. In other words, it will pay you for being enslaved, but you will have to leave the country using this money. What this tells us is the northern states do not like slavery, but they don't want black people in their country. This is basically very racist to me. This law is something that black people can celebrate because it ends slavery in Washington, D.C., and in fact, it is still celebrated as a city holiday today. The final section of this law, section 12, simply states that any law in the district or in Maryland that disagrees with this law is hereby repealed. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. So until next time, see ya.